Well, the summer transfer window has been completed. We've spent the guts of 100 million quid on new sign-ins. Let's go take a look and see exactly how that breaks down. We also brought in 38.5 million pounds in player sales. The first of which was George Dobson, a boy we've had from League One. He's done absolutely fantastic stuff for us, but Watford came in with an £11.5 million bid. And despite him being reasonably well-rounded, especially in the mental category, I felt he wasn't quite at the level necessary for Premier League football. And we needed cash, so sad to see him go, but we got a decent enough fee for him. Next to leave was Antonin, who joined Sheffield United for £11.25 million. Quid. He joined them in loan in January and this was the agreed fee after a certain number of appearances. He ended up hitting that mark so the deal was complete. Again, a decent option from the Championship was signing for 800k. He did okay when Esposito was injured but uh, he never really would have made the grade at the Premier League, at least in my opinion. He went to Sheffield United, helped them get promoted and now he's back in the Premier League so we'll face him at some point this season. Next to leave was Philippe Marchinski, who we sold to Ghent for £10 million straight. Another championship signing who we signed for £1.5 million. He did fantastic in the championship. Six goals and six assists in 37 games with a 7.17 average rating. But another one who was never really going to make it at the Premier League. Still had a bit of potential to grow, so Ghent have brought him to Belgium. Oh, back up right back left next, Ivan went to join Young Boys for a fee that could rise to £5.25 million. Quid. Again, another decent championship sign we signed for 475k. That championship season was absolutely unbelievable from him. He found his game time much more limited in the Premier League after we signed Christiansen. So um, he's left in another decent bit of profit. Another few people left. Hosea Gomes left to join Blackpool for 875k. Madza for 550k to Birmingham. Donny Vardavam to Sheffield Wednesday for 200k, Lars Dendonka for 3.7k, and then a load of loans of our youngsters, the main of which was Benjamin Clark. Of course, we gave him a lot of first-team football in the Premier League last season. He does still have fantastic potential, and I'm hoping a season that's more at his level at West Brom in the Championship will mean he will come back to us and be a much better player. And that brings us to the inns, where the first of which is Juan Miranda. You've probably seen this boy before. He's an absolutely fantastic left back from Barcelona. He comes in on loan for the season and he will be our first choice. Josh Tymon, he'll be playing back up. Obviously, his injury ruined him last season. So Juan Miranda comes in. And I think he's absolutely fantastic and he'll do great in our system, bombing forward and uh, supporting us in the final third. Next to join us was just a little bit of squad filler, Kevin Van Kooten. From uh, Norwich, he's a centre-half, 18-year-old English lad. He's like our fourth-choice centre-back. He's got attributes in the right areas, and if he was my player permanently, I'd be absolutely buzzing with him. Um, he's, a, he's a bit raw. He's definitely just a centre-back and nothing much more than that, but uh, hopefully we'll never really have to play him too much. Next to join us was Magnus Stangerup. We signed him from Holbach for free, and purely down to his mental categories. He's two-star, three-star. Hasn't really got that much potential to grow, really. But he's going to sit now under 23s, hopefully improve. And um, any money we get from him will be a profit. Bobby Duncan was one signed by my under 23s manager. 21-year-old English striker joining from Fiorentina. Never really going to be part of my first team plans. Dennis Zanelli was one that we signed. Um, he is a centre-back on a free transfer. He has come in and went straight out on loan to Coventry. Similar situation to uh, Benjamin Clark. Could potentially re he could really be a Premier League centre-half and be fantastic in it. Uh, he's got only got four star potential rather than four and a half or five. But um, we'll wait and see how he develops at Coventry. Then we start to get to the bigger, bigger players. Reese Nelson ended up joining us on free transfer from Arsenal. Natural on both wings is absolutely fantastic. He will be competing with, um, what's his face? On the right hand side. You know who I'm talking about. Abdul Kadir. He obviously hasn't really developed that well at Arsenal on this year. But hopefully we can start to resurrect that. Giving him plenty of first team football and... Uh, uh, just an English lad is nice to get in. Yuri Smirnov from Kamaz. We joined from six point, for 6.75k. Just another youngster. He'll be sitting in our under-18s, this lad. And uh, a little bit of potential about him. We'll see how he develops at the club. Now we get to the serious money. Dramana Kiyate joined us from San Lorenzo for £5 million. I believe we've shown him already. He is going to come in and be our backup attack and midfielder to Sergio Gomez. But he provides us some real strength and depth. And obviously with our European campaign this season in the Champions League, we're going to have to really rely on our backup players to be able to keep us fit throughout the course of the season. And he is absolutely phenomenal. He's just unfortunate for him that Sergio Gomez is just too good to dispossess. 
Next to join us was Benoit Baddy Shale. Of course, we had him on loan in January. £5.75 million was an agreed fee we had as part of his loan deal. And I thought he'd done well enough. Um, I was really struggling to find a first-choice centre-back, so I ended up bringing him back in for five million quid. I don't think it's a bad signing. We've managed him before on FM20, and we know he can really develop into something special. Um, so he'll probably end up being first-choice alongside Nerwen Perez. Now, I'm going to talk about these two boys together because... If James Garner had become available for £8 million before we signed Marcus Antonio for 21, I wouldn't have signed Marcus Antonio. So James Garner, we had him at Barnsley. Was it Barnsley? Or Birmingham. Uh, a defensive midfielder, deep lying player, making play that role absolutely fantastically, which is what we will de be deploying this season. Another English lad, good potential, fantastic current ability for our squad, and he will be probably our number one competing with Marcus Antonio. Now, I was desperate for a defensive midfielder, having sold George Dobson. And Marcus Antonio was the best of the bunch that was available for a reasonable fee. Um, he might end up being first choice. I'm gutted that I spent this much money on somebody when James Garner became available for that much cheaper. Not even a few weeks later. Next to join us was Nasi Unavar from Ajax for 11.25 million quid. He was transfer listed by request. I believe he was rejecting contracts at Ajax. So he's ended up joining us. He's going to be playing on that left hand side competing with Oliver Batista Meyer. Uh, maybe getting the starts, maybe not. I haven't really quite decided yet. He has does have the potential on Batista Meyer, and I, I'm sure you boys have seen him before on Football Manager. You know he can develop into something that is really, really good. So obviously with Esposito leaving the club and financially him not really being a viable option for us to bring him back in, we had to find another striker, and I'm hoping I found our end game striker. Sedetin Avci from Galatasaray, his minimum fee release clause was 20 and a half million quid. Otherwise, they would not have sold me him. And this is him. Fantastic physically. Uh, 17 paces, great. 18 agility, 14 acceleration. He's only 18 years old. Uh, he, he looks absolutely unbelievable. His technicals as an advanced forward are already top level and are only going to improve. He's finishing his first touch. Get them to 16. I mean, you're looking at an absolute worldie. And same goes for his mentals. He's got some. Uh, his composure at 12 isn't the greatest, but we've got him working on that as part of his attack and movement training. And determination and flair 20 and 17 is just, I think he's going to be special. Maybe not as good as Esposito was last season, but give him two or three years. And I have no doubt in my mind he'll be one of the best strikers in the league. And finally, that takes us to our most expensive signing was Mathis Pouget from EA Ghent. Of course, they assigned Philip Marchinski, I think, as a direct replacement, £23 million. And he's a central midfield, 18-year-old Belgian. Isn't quite capped by the national side, but I expect that to happen this season. Very well-rounded. He's going to be playing as that Metzola in the centre of midfield for us. And I think between him and uh, Sedat and Avci, we'll really have two end-game players. If we decide to keep them, they could see us through the next 10, 12 years. So that's all of our transfer business that we have done so far. We still have £17 million left with 100 k available in the wage budget. The transfer window isn't over yet, and I am interested in bringing in some more players. We've got Ravel Tajir, who uh, potentially could be joining us for, was it six six point two five million pounds £6.25 million, another centre-half option. If he was to join us, he'd probably end up taking Ben Moore, Baddy Shields' role as our first-choice centre-back, and we'll probably look to move on Andres Hancher Olsen, who, of course, we signed in the Championship and hasn't really made the step up to the Premier League. We might have some issues, though. I, um, I completely forgot Perez. Has a minimum fee release clause in his contract. Do you want to guess how much it is? It's uh, 33 million for clubs in the Champions League. He won't talk about a new contract. Barcelona have already come in, started sniffing at around 29 million. Hopefully they don't come back in. But if Perez ends up leaving, uh, Ravel Tajir and Betty Achille will end up being our first choice centre backs and we will be much, much weaker for it. But hopefully that doesn't happen and uh, we manage to be able to keep on to Perez as he is a fantastic centre half. That takes us to our opening game of the season against Bournemouth. We are away from home. Let's get our first 11 put together and get to the game. So this is probably our strongest starting 11 outside of <clears throat> Abdul Qadir Omar on that right-hand side. Jack Butland in goal. Couldn't find a keeper. Uh, Christensen at right-back. Perez, Badi Yashil and Miranda in the defence. Marcus Antonio and Pugier in the centre of the park. Reese Nelson, Sergio Gomez, Unava and Avci leading the line let's get into the game and see how we get on we are in the second season of course in the premier league and is there going to be a second season syndrome for us hopefully not strange squad this bomber squad got like arturo vidal mario patelli chala noglu 
uh, Pereira. It's it's a little bit strange, but they've obviously been in the Premier League for years, so it's going to be no easy task away from home. But I am hoping we can get a win in our first game of the season. First highlight of the game is a free kick for us. Sergio Gomez plays it in. Of course, last season he really was a set-piece specialist and they resulted in plenty of assists for him. Marcus Antonio, though, plays it through. Eve oh, Avci was through there. The goalkeeper completely made a meal of it, but we didn't quite get on the end of it. Gomez with the corner. It's played in. It's cleared by Ryan Frazier. Another highlight now. Sedetton's in. Oh, Avci, come on, mate. It is going to take some time for these boys to settle in, particularly the likes of Avci and Pugier, 18-year-old coming from a foreign country, and that is a penalty. Why? Why are we giving away a penalty so early on? It's Benoit Badia-Shale who has made the offence. It's Mario Balotelli who was going to step up for Bournemouth to take it. And Jack Butland cannot quite get there. 34 minutes in, we find ourselves 1-0 down. Hasn't been the greatest of starts by either side, but uh, Bournemouth find themselves 1-0 up. Jack Butland with an absolutely awful goal kick feeds it straight to Frazier on this right-hand side for Bournemouth. He goes for goal and it's an easy, easy save. Another highlight now, Reese Nelson wins the ball in the final third for Bournemouth and uh, we do manage to work it out, but we give the ball away to Pereira on that left-hand side. Bournemouth work it well to Hakan Chalanoglu on this left-hand side. They switch the play to Frazier on the right. We've got uh, Miranda out there, Stacey overlapping. He's going to whip it in, back post, Chalanoglu's there. Oh, don't give a penalty. Don't, do, oh, wait, you should have given a penalty. Callum Wilson's first goal of the season. Two goals for their two strikers and Bournemouth 2-0 up going into half time. And there we have it then. Bournemouth 2, Sunderland 0. That's hugely, hugely disappointing. Um, I really, really hope to see a much better second half from us. First highlight of the second half is Sergio Gomez with the corner. Badia Shale tries to get in the end of it. He can't quite make it, but we do feed it back in. And what an assist that would have been by Sergio Gomez. But Reese Nelson cannot put the ball in the back of the net. This highlight is continuing. So something else must be afoot here. Marcus Antonio feeds it to Gomez. Out of the right-hand side for Reese Nelson. He bombs in the box. Avci's there. Oh, Avci. He's had a good couple of opportunities this game. And he hasn't quite been able to take them. It was a fantastic save by the Bournemouth goalkeeper, to be fair. And uh, the corner doesn't look like it's resulting in anything. Right, with 30 minutes to go, we're going to have to make some changes. Avchi's going to come off. We're going to bring on Lewis Montanio, who, of course, we've got as backup. Oliver Batista might come on that left-hand side for Nashi Unova. And who else? We'll bring on Dramana Chiarte for Sergio Gomez. All attacking changes. Hopefully, we can really start to make a difference. Another highlight now, 64 minutes in. Bournemouth again in possession. And uh, hopefully, we can win this and spring on the counter. But Vidal's ball is beautiful for Balotelli. It's a decent save in the end by uh, Butland to keep us even remotely in this game. But they do have a corner. We do get a clear. Time is sort of ticking away. We're going very attacking for the final 30 minutes. We do have a highlight. Reese Nelson bombing forward from that right-hand side. He gets in the box. And it's a bloody team effort. And there we are, lads. Time is ticking away in this match. We're through everything we can at Bournemouth. And unfortunately, we have came up short. Maybe if Esposito was still here, we might have got a different result in this game. But... Bournemouth 2, Sunderland 0. We take our defeat on the chin. The board's expectations aren't too bad. We're only expected to finish in the top half of the Premier League this season. So that is, of course, our aim. Be competitive in the Champions Cup means they don't expect anything in the Champions Cup. And looking forward, that will be our next episode. We do not know who we are facing just yet. We'll wrap up the transfer window, play through these games, play our opening game uh, in the Champions League alongside probably Leeds and uh, Champions League football with Sunderland. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly looking forward to it. I hope you are too. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.